I want to uh, just give you an update on some research that I think is really important. One of the most important questions about the virus that causes COVID-19 has been whether the virus is truly airborne and can be transmitted if it's not a part of large droplets. Observations that the virus can be transmitted in normal conversations by someone who is not showing symptoms certainly supports this idea. And also, some investigators have sampled air from rooms where COVID-19 positive individuals have been, and they've found nucleic acids from SARS-CoV-2, the COVID-19 virus. But the PCR test is so sensitive that finding nucleic acids from the virus is not the same as, as identifying virus. So it has not been definitively proven that SARS-CoV-2 virus is airborne until now. I want to share with you some just released data from a study done by investigators at the University of Florida. They collected air samples from a hospital room that had COVID-19 patients who were not coughing or sneezing. They were in isolation rooms. This room had a fairly sophisticated air handling system. The total air in the room was changed six times per hour or every 10 minutes. The air was triple filtered down to 0.3 microns, about three times the size of a virus particle. The air was also passed through a UV irradiation device to sterilize it. So after all that, <laughs> they took the air from the room they subjected it to two things. They looked for virus nucleic acids. They also asked whether they could culture virus from the air by putting it onto cells that were susceptible to the virus. The answer to both of those questions was yes. And what's really remarkable is whether the air was collected from six feet away or 27 feet away, they were able to find virus in those air samples. So despite this sophisticated air handling system, that included UV irradiation to sterilize it, these investigators were still able to pull virus out of the air. And keep in mind that these individuals were not coughing or sneezing. They're simply in a hospital room. That's an isolation room. The implications of this finding are pretty profound. First of all, it indicates that social distancing of six feet is probably not adequate to prevent transmission of the virus especially indoors when the ventilation is poor or not adequate to move the air along. So social distancing inside without wearing a mask gives a false sense of security. And this result emphasizes yet again how important it is for all of us, if you're going to beat this pandemic, to wear a mask. I think the evidence is now overwhelming that unless we all wear a mask, we're not going to defeat the virus. It could not be more important to do so. This study should inform decisions about reopening schools, churches, certain sports venues, and many other things, especially where large numbers of people will gather and the ventilation is not adequate to change the air frequently. So if the virus remains in the air in an isolation room in a hospital that changes the air six times per hour, UV irradiates the air, filters the air triple three times, and you can still find virus, what makes us think it's safe to open a school where the ventilation is poor and HVAC systems are outdated and outmoded? I'll leave you to think about that. Also, if resources are not provided for the teachers and students to have PPE when they need it, whenever they need it, that's also something to think about. I realize these are very stressful times for parents of school-aged children. And it's well understood that the emotional and social well-being of, of children is probably best served by them being in a school. On the other hand, it is now beyond dispute that children can be infected, will be infected, some of them will get sick, and unfortunately, as we know, some of them will also die. And keep in mind, another point I mentioned before, in past pandemics, those who recover from coronaviruses have long-term consequences that go well past the time they recover. We don't know this won't happen in children, and we can predict that it will based on what we've seen in other pandemics. So that's something we need to think about. And please consider this. <laughs> when our children get sick, 
we call a pediatrician. If our roof leaks, we call a roofer. If we're having problems with our teeth, we do not call an auto mechanic. We call a dentist who've been trained to take care of that problem. My point is this, with all due respect, some of our elected leaders who are pushing to open schools the hardest are the least qualified to know if it's safe to do so. And they're refusing to listen to the public health experts who spent our whole lives and careers studying these things. So my advice to you as you make the difficult, stressful decisions about whether to have your children in a school, please listen to those who spent their whole lives and careers studying and determining whether or not it would be safe to do so. And I can't emphasize enough, based on what I've just shared with you, how important it is that masks be worn by all of us, because if we don't do that, the virus is going to continue to win.